I've been wanting to do a video on the wave function does not collapse. And then recently there's been a quote by Freeman Dyson circulating in social media that's perfect. And it's, so I thought I'd start with that. Unfortunately, people writing about quantum mechanics often use the phrase collapse of the wave function to describe what happens when an object is observed. This phrase gives a misleading idea that the wave function itself is a physical object. A physical object can collapse when it bumps into an obstacle, but a wave function cannot be a physical object. A wave function is a description of a probability, and a probability is a statement of ignorance. Ignorance is not a physical object, and neither is a wave function. When new knowledge displaces ignorance, the wave function does not collapse. It merely becomes irrelevant. And I think that's pretty well written, except I wouldn't use the word ignorance. But his points can be summarized. Wave functions aren't physical objects. Wave functions are descriptions of probabilities. Wave functions are statements of ignorance. Ignorance is not a physical object. A wave function doesn't collapse. It becomes irrelevant. And as I said, it, probabilities, understanding probabilities isn't actually ignorance. It's something. It is some knowledge, even though it's not knowledge of what's going to happen, what's the physical interaction that's going to lead to the end result. And I like, would like to make a few more points. Wave functions are equations. Wave functions describe the behavior of physical objects. And the equations aren't physical objects. The waves, when there are waves, are made of quantum fluctuations. And the quantum fluctuations are the medium. They are the physical objects. And when quantum waves collapse, they collapse instantaneously to a point. I have this drawing that I use to talk about the collapse of a photon at the point when it gets absorbed. What is interesting is the electromagnetic waves are all outside the light cone at the instant of absorption. So all that energy would be lost if the collapse wasn't instantaneous. Now to truly understand quantum mechanics, we need to know what type of causes give us the effects we see. And the primary cause that I've discovered in my quantum field theory research is an electron interacting with a quantum electron positron, where the positron annihilates with the electron and the new electron becomes free. And this interaction causes a quantum jump. The electron appears to jump, although it's been actually replaced. And when you have a series of jumps, the quantum jumps lead to Brownian motion. And it's been shown that if you have electrons in Brownian motion, such as in a hydrogen atom, you can derive Schrodinger's equation from that. So we can physically describe the interaction leading to Schrodinger's equation as Brownian motion. And once you have Schrodinger's equation, you can derive all of quantum mechanics, all starting from the principle of having quantum jumps. And there are other interactions that also have a similar electron-positron interacting with a free electron. And those are spontaneous emission, beta decay, black body radiation, synchrotron radiation, as I explained in the comments of a recent video. Basically, any time you have a photon, you start with an electron-positron annihilation, where there's excess energy so it doesn't just vanish. And so we can understand a large class of interactions that way. 
Of course, there's also interactions between proton and antiproton pairs and the proton or neutron. So there are a number of different interactions we can consider that are similar. And then we also have a class of any two particles colliding, of course, give you interactions. If you have physical objects meeting an obstacle. The key is, is that we must understand the cause that leads to the effect. And that gives us a mechanistic view of quantum mechanics. So we don't have a mystical the wave function collapse. Any true physicist should not use the statement the wave function collapsed because it's not logically correct and it's not scientifically correct. It's a phrase that was, I don't know who made up, but it shouldn't be in common use because it's not descriptive of what's happening. We should describe what physical objects are interacting and what they're doing that lead to the end result. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please like, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for the next time, and I will put up the books that I have for sale. I describe quantum jump interactions in my book, The Zero Point Universe, and I also have a couple papers on that I'll link below. And if you buy one of my books, that'll help me out in my retirement, and I hope you would learn a lot from reading it. And so thanks for watching.